you like stories about giants? Can you think of any stories you know about giants? I wonder, do you think giants are fierce or friendly? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Since we are going to be celebrating the Feast of St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, this month, this week's story is an Irish tale about a very famous giant called Finn McCool. At the end, you can decide if you think this giant is fierce or friendly. Mums and dads and all you grown-ups, if you're enjoying this award-winning podcast, can you please take a moment to rate and or review it? It really helps us grow our outreach. Thanks ever so much. Let's take a journey with Finn McCool. A long time ago, on the wild northern coast of Ireland, there lived a giant by the name of Finn McCool. Sometimes folk would see him sitting by the water's edge with his thumb in his mouth. His thumb, it was said, was the source of Finn's wisdom. Whenever he had a question to ponder, a conundrum to solve, he would simply suck on that thumb. And lo and behold, the answer came to him in a flash. Now, there came a day when Finn fell in love with a giantess named Una, who lived in a rocky isle across the Irish Sea. But poor Finn had a terrible dilemma, because he did not know how to swim. And so how was he to go to his beloved? Well, after Finn pondered his predicament for a while by sucking on his thumb, he got an idea. He rushed out and tore up some trees to build himself a boat. But when he stepped inside... The boat sank under his heavy weight. Again, Finn sucked on his thumb and then he rushed out to gather columns of rock, six-sided each, flat-topped and weighing ten tons. He stood on the shore and tossed those columns one after another into the sea. And sure enough, all the way from Finn's home on the Antrim coast to Una's Isle, lay a path of stones called the Giant's Causeway. Finn went off to woo Una and the next thing you know those two were married and they had a son who grew up and left home to live among the fairies. Una and Finn were sad to see him go but everyone near and far could still hear them singing late into the night. That's how happy they were together. Now, there was one person who was not so happy with all that singing. It was another giant by the name of Ben and Donner who lived all alone on the Isle of Staffa. He was hairy and hideous with three eyes, one big and bulging right in the centre of his brow. Day after day, Una and Finn laughed and sang and Ben and Donner scowled and grumbled until one stormy day he sent a message by bird challenging Finn to fight for Una's love. Finn and Una laughed at this challenge but Finn knew he must accept it. He sent a message back to Ben and Donner inviting him to visit him on the next fine day. So, one sunny summer's day, Ben and Donner walked across that giant causeway and marched right up to Finn's door. Una answered the knock. Ah, Finn's away, she said, for Finn had gone to take a walk. Come tomorrow, she said. Indeed I will agreed Ben and Donner. That night, when Finn saw the giant's footsteps outside his door, he trembled with fear. Oh, sure he's a huge monster, said Finn to Una. Aye, so he is, she said, but never mind, I know how we'll fix him. We will. And she told Finn exactly what to do. The next day, Una answered the knock at the door. But this time, Finn was home, except he was hiding. He was curled up inside the cradle that had once belonged to their little son. He was bundled up in blankets so that only his eyes were showing. What's this, your baby? Ben and Donner asked when he saw the cradle rocking there. And he leaned over 
And he looked into the baby's gleaming eyes. I sure he is, Una said, and Finn will be home soon. Sit you down and eat some of my oat cakes. And she gave him a plateful of the cakes she had baked. But into these she slipped some pieces of the metal griddle. Ben and Donna took a big bite, breaking half his teeth on those griddle pieces, and he screeched so loud the earth itself shook. <gasps> What's in these? he roared, and Una shrugged. Our baby loves them, butter and sugar and eggs and flour, she said, and she fed one of the cakes to Finn lying there in the cradle. But this one was soft and fluffy without a bit of griddle inside it, and Finn swallowed it down whole. That baby must have teeth of iron, Ben and Donner said. And he bent over the cradle, he leaned in, and he stuck his finger in the baby's mouth. Crunch! Finn bit down on that finger so hard, it came right off. Ben and Donner wailed again. Oh, what kind of baby is he, strong enough to bite off a giant's finger? Oh, he's just a wee thing, Una said. Not that strong yet, though his daddy teaches some things. Ben and Donner laughed nervously. <laughs> what kind of things? he asked. Una smiled as she lifted a rock. Oh, to squeeze the juice from the rocks, she said, handing over the rock to Finn. Finn squeezed and sure enough, liquid began to ooze from that rock because, see, Una had played a trick. This rock was but a rock of cheese. Let me try that, Ben and Donner cried and Una handed him another rock. Ben and Donner squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, and he was strong, sure he was. But nobody can squeeze liquid out of a real rock, and that's what it was. Ben and Donner looked again at the ooze dripping out of the rock in the cradle, and then he thought, if this baby be strong like this, then what must his father be? And he began to tremble, and then he said, I'll be going now. And he backed out of that house and ran across the causeway. But halfway across, a thought struck him and he stopped. Then, working feverishly with all his great strength, he carried away the middle section of those rocks, one by one, for he'd no wish for a visit from that monstrous fin. And that is why, these days, only the beginning and the end remain of the giant's causeway, one on Staffa Island, home of Ben and Donner, and another on the Antrim coast, just near the place where Finn lived. And that is how people know this tale of Finn McCool. So what do you think? Do you think our Finn was fierce? Or was he friendly? Maybe it depends on who you ask. This type of story is called a legend, which just means it's a very popular story that people have passed down through the years from generation to generation, but no one can really say for certain if it's true or not. But if you do visit Ireland and County Antrim in Northern Ireland, you'll see this area of about 40,000 interlocking columns, the result of an ancient volcanic eruption, which is now known as the Giant's Causeway. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Cheerio then, join me next time for Journey with Story. Journey with Story